Hello, everyone, and welcome to Uncle Bronson's podcast. Man, we're so lucky today because we have one of my teammates that I've known for a few years now. Uh, actually, I played against him, and now we've been teammates in the NFL on two different teams. So I'm pretty excited to have Ben Braden here. Ben, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, bud. It's yeah. good to be here with you. Oh, yeah, I'm so excited. Uh, man. <laughs> I've known Ben for a long time. Uh, he's his nickname, which is fitting, is the mountain because you see this man in real life. The man is huge. So, <laughs> yeah, how tall are you? Uh, about six six, just under six seven. I tried. I got really close. <laughs> <laughs> how much do you? How much do you weigh? Uh, oof. This morning I weighed in about three forty five, three forty. Oh, yeah, a little God. over three forty five. Yeah, and like 12% body fat. The mountain is awesome. I love it. Oops. Well, just to get things started, maybe you could like start off by telling us a little bit about, you know, your background, kind of like your football story and kind of like your, like where, how you got to where you're at right now. Yeah. Um, honestly, you know, I didn't start playing football until I was a sophomore in high school. Um, played ice hockey as a kid. I thought that was going to be, you know, my path. That was my dream Yeah. Played for the Red Wings. And uh, that's funny how things change. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I started playing in high school. Um, and then, you know, kind of got recruited a little bit and then I uh, ended up going to Michigan. Uh, I was there for five years between 2012 and uh, 2016. Um, you know, and then uh, coming out for the draft, uh, I went undrafted. And did a whole, you know, trial process with the Jets. And um, that's where you and I met. That was, I think that was my second year when we met. Um, and then uh, my third year was kind of a weird year. Um, I was started with the Jets. And then I went to the Packers. And then at the end of the year, I went back to the Jets. <laughs> so, um, and then I uh, spent one uh, training camp with the Patriots. And then after that, back here at the Packers. So kind of really back and forth with two teams a little bit there. Um, but, you know, it's fifth year and it's going great. It's definitely been a process. You know, it, it definitely teaches you to keep grinding. Yeah, no, yeah, no doubt. The NFL is so wild because, you know, anything can anything can happen and things change, you know, in so moments. Fast. Yeah, they change so <laughs> fast. So, so fast. Quick. Uh, so maybe you can tell us a little about a little bit about like what helped you like what helped you in in college with playing. I mean, you went to Michigan. I remember playing against you. You killed us. <laughs> it was like 31 0 when we played against you guys. But like what uh, yeah, like what helped you to, you know, going to the school that you went to and being being able to be a starter there, like that's that's hard, you know, because there's some the competition is crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, as a, as a freshman, I had Taylor Lewan and Michael Schofield, both of our big tackles, um, you know, to really look up to as a young guy. Uh, I think that was uh, really important to have a good group of guys that you can look up to and learn from as a young guy. Um, and I would say the same thing in the NFL too, you know, being when you're a young guy, having an older guy to look up to and, you know, kind of connect with, um, it is really, really good. Um, but you know, honestly, it was just kind of going to Michigan. I didn't really know what to expect, um, you know, coming out of high school. Just being honest, I never really had to work hard. I never knew what that was um, just because I was, you know, fortunate and gifted physically. I, I didn't know what it was. So I, I kind of had a little wake up call my first couple of years in college as far as figuring out how to push through tough times, you know, um, push yourself. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think having coaches and people that are willing to be with you, even in the worst of times for yourself and keep pushing with you, I think that was really important to me. Um, I had some strength coaches um, that, you know, I got close with and they were good about pushing me, um, but also encouraging me when I really was like, man, this is tough. What am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> um you know, and I just kept grinding. And then my third year, I got the starting spot at right tackle. Um, and then after that, you know, I was a starter. The next year, I played left guard. 
That's when uh, Jim Harbaugh came. And then my last year, I started at left guard and then our left tackle, unfortunately, he got hurt. He was a true freshman um, and he was, uh, he, he hurt and, you know, that was just a bad situation. And then I got bumped out to left tackle and wow. was there the rest of the year. It's a lot of fun, but. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. I, uh, I didn't know that to be honest. <laughs> but, yeah. that's, that's awesome. <laughs> it totally makes sense though, because I mean, knowing you and like how hard you work and, you know, good things, good things always, always come to those who, you know, really work hard and position themselves for like the opportunity. I think, you know, a lot of, a lot of life is just like about that. Like you, you know, how you work, you know, when people aren't you watching and do all that and yeah. you know, good things always come. So yeah, you, you never know those opportunities are going to come. You got to be ready. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously, you do anything, anything can happen. So then you, so then you transition, right? To the NFL and I guess what's like the biggest lesson you've learned, you know, that that's helped you, uh, like on the field, off the field. I, I just feel like anything you learn from sports correlates so well off the field. So oh, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, so like what's a lesson that maybe that you've learned just being in the NFL, like when you made the jump. Um, you know, I would say perseverance, um, you know, and like, obviously, like you said, everything that you learn in football always seems to correlate to life. And I definitely agree with that. Um, you know, things are going to happen in life where, you know, they're going to be going great or, you know, at some point things could turn and they're not going well. Um, and you really got to push through a struggle and you're not sure how it's going to go. Um, and I feel like you see a lot of people when they, and they fall short, maybe they, it's because they quit, you know, or they gave up or, you know, they let the the doubts and the fears get to them. Um, and it's not, that's not saying you can't have fears. I mean, I definitely have fears often, even still now. Mm -hmm. um, but in those moments where I'm afraid, I know that, you know, if I just keep working and keep pushing and I surround myself with good people that, that have mind, the good mindset of, you know, keep pushing and being supportive, you know, for me and, you know, vice versa, I love being supportive of them. Um, you know, I think that's a good thing in life is surrounding yourself with friends and family that, you know, uh, in the good times and the bad times, they're going to be honest with you, but also encouraging and supportive. I think that's a huge thing I've learned in the NFL is, um, you know, you just got to push. Sometimes that's all you got to do is when things are really grinding, you just got to push. Yeah. And eventually you'll push to the other side. <laughs> that's true. It's uh, true. No, it's so, it's so true. I love that. I love that. Cause I, I mean, I've seen you live it since I've known you. And so it's so, it's so true. You gotta keep pushing good thing. Good things happen to you get to that other side. That's great. So I know, uh, I mean, shoot, I'm your great football player. You're a great husband. His wife is six, four and that's awesome. And so uh, you should see the mountain. Son. He's a, he's going to be yeah. I don't have to pay for college. He's, he's gonna be stronger right. than me already. <laughs> <laughs> and you, and just to let everyone know that you had just had your your little daughter here. So that's yeah. Awesome. She's uh, six weeks, seven weeks. She's seven weeks now. Seven weeks now. Wow. Crazy man. Time flies. When you have kids. Time just flies. <laughs> it really does. Jeez, look at that. You're doing so much. Uh, so football, family, uh, off the field though. The mountain has some other passions that are awesome which I want to touch on. Uh, the, so Ben, he is just amazing with cars. When it comes to cars, literally, you need to come to this guy right here because he knows everything about them. So how did you, how did you fall in love with cars? Like, what's your, what, what's that story? I've actually never asked you that story. <laughs> you know, it's a fun story. So we're going back to high school, like we do with okay. football. Um, I think it was my sophomore year. Would that make sense? Yeah, sophomore year. Uh, my parents had just bought my grandmother's car, you know, it was old Chrysler 300, you know, perfect. It's not going very fast, but it'll get me from point A to point B. Yeah. Um, and after school, so where I, um, I went to Rockford high school in Michigan and the way our schools were set up was you had the high school and then the freshman center were like right next to each other. They shared the same road. Mm. Um, so as you're leaving, you also are like with all the school buses and everything, you know, and they're all, they go from the high school to the freshman center and then out to wherever they're going. Uh -huh. um, and in this car, the radio was kind of down below. So yeah. you had to like look down to, you know, if you want to do anything. 
And I just remember sitting there, we were in stop and go traffic. And um, there's a school bus in front of me and this commercial came on. It was really loud. So I looked down just to turn the radio down. And But just before that, we started moving. And as I turned the radio down, I was going to look back up. And before I knew it, I was nose under the school bus. Wait, just what? rear-ended it. I like <laughs> last minute slammed on the brakes, hmm. nose dived. And I just panicked. And I was like, so like, I was afraid, but I was also really angry at the same time. <laughs> and I was like, come on, I know. So, um, you know, got out of the car. I was so mad. And I the hood was just like, it looked like a tent. It was just crumpled. And I was like, oh man, if I just totaled this car, my parents are going to be so mad. Because <laughs> uh, I was like, there's no way to buy me another car. I'm going to have to walk to school or ride with a friend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, after that, my dad was like, well, I mean, I, you know, we can't afford to take it to somebody to get a fix. So if you want this, you're, you're going to have to fix it yourself. Um, and my dad's background with, he's an engineer. So he's, you know, got that mindset, but his dad also, his dad, my grandfather raced, uh, the, you know, local dirt track racing way back in the day. Oh, cool. Long, I mean, obviously long before I was even a thought. Um, so, you know, racing is kind of in the family. Yeah. Um, and so my dad was like, you know, well, he took it, we took it to a shop just to see if it was actually totaled and it wasn't thankfully. Um, but I mean, like a lot of the accessories on the engine need to replace, the intake manifold, headlights from, I mean, the hood, obviously <laughs> it yeah. was just mangled. Um, and so through that, he started kind of teaching me how, you know, putting parts on and I was like, so what does this do? And, you know, how does this work and how does this correlate with this? And then once I kind of started learning like the fundamentals of how engines work, I was like, oh, this is really cool. I want to know more. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, from there, I was like, huh, I wonder how like these kind of cars work, like Ferraris or, you know, American muscle cars and trucks. And I was just all of a sudden I started kind of just asking myself a lot of these questions and, you know, talking to people, especially my dad. And then, um, you know, just looking at forums, um, I feel like in the car world, you know, you read forums and you just become part of communities and you start learning. And then from there, I just like, I got the bug. <laughs> I was obsessed. I was like, this is just so cool. And then how you can take like any kind of car and just make it your own. Oh, I yeah. thought that was the coolest thing ever. Dang. So from there, man, I just started loving working on cars. And um, my first project was when we were out in New York together. I worked on that old Triumph TR6. And, you know, I worked on that. And then, you know, I mean, that was just super fun. Yeah, what'd you do to it? Like, uh, maybe just... Yeah, just so it was part of a family friend's car and it just had sat in the garage for a long time. I don't know how many years. Yeah. And um, I, you know, I was like, I saw it one day and I was like, hey, what do you got in the garage there? And because it was covered. And they were like, oh, that's just you know an old car. And I'm like, can I look at it? And they're like, sure. Um, and they didn't know I was teaching the cars, and I'm already like getting all like jittery and I'm excited just to see what it is. Yeah. Because I didn't recognize the shape, it was kind of small. Um, and I moved the cover back and it was a 1974 Triumph TR6. And I was like, this is really cool. This is like, you know, like a little, uh, roadster. And, um, they started telling me a little bit about it. And I was like, do you care if I just tinker with it? Like just try and get it running again? They're like, yeah. sure. So, um, I ended up putting different carburetors on there. Um, I rebuilt the distributor, and kind of redid the ignition system, kind of modernize it a little bit. So what they had originally in there was like a points system. And I kind of tried to modernize it a little bit to make it more efficient. Um, you know, I redid, I uh, had to uh, reinstall the, the clutch and needed a new clutch and pressure plate. So I had to figure out how to take the transmission out. And with that, um, you had to take it out through the car, not underneath. Oh, really? So I just, like, I had to figure all that out. I mean, it was just, it, it was a lot of like cool things. and um you know just kind of going through that i was like oh this is really cool and we actually got it running really oh you know man. It, it took a couple months but we got it running i was like this is so cool man. um and uh after that when i what was this a year ago my next project was the camaro yeah so what yeah what type of camaro was that, that it's a with? uh 2014 uh camaro ss convertible but it started out as two cars so I had like my parts car where I found that on like Facebook marketplace and it had a lot of good parts, but no engine transmission, the front end, I was in an accident, but mm -hmm. the rest of it was great. 
Um, and that car was yellow. And then I found just a bare shell of the exact same urine model uh -huh. uh, up in Detroit. So I got that one down from Detroit to my house in Indy. And then I had the parts car and we just mashed the two together. Jeez. And and now it's 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 like ninety five percent done. Um, oh man, that's so. Cool. There's there's a few like computer tweaks and things we gotta um, you know get things so they're communicating together as far as the computer and the modules and stuff like that. But yeah, uh, yeah, it, that's been fun. I've learned a lot through that because you essentially rebuild an entire car. I mean, I've moved every piece, the convertible top, all the wiring. Um, bought an engine and transmission and put that in the suspension. Jeez. I mean, everything I've had to put on this new car. So it's been fun just to kind of essentially build an entire car. Wow. So, uh, man, it's been a blast. You're so, I literally will be driving around and, and he will be like, Whoa, did you see that car? And he'll tell me what it is. And I have no idea what it is, but oh my gosh. Man, <laughs> oh, that's so, I love it. That's so cool. So, like, you know, after, after football is, you know, do you want to do something with, cars like or because you're so passionate about it you're so good at it you know you can fix any car build anything so is that something that you'd want to do after football absolutely um I, i've been recently working with um some business people i know and meeting with speed core over uh down in milwaukee oh, um wow. i met with them a couple of weeks ago but um I, i'm really working on starting my own custom car business um, out of Indiana. So I, you know, it's definitely a process and it's been fun to really, you know, think about it and start putting legs to things and, yeah. um, you know, start getting the business model written up and, but yeah, I'm, I'm super excited to, you know, have that passion going as well as playing football at the same time. And, you know, I don't know, it's going to be fun. I'll have to build yeah. you a car. Oh, that's <laughs> it, honestly, I just think it's like, it's so important for, you know, athletes at all levels to have stuff that they're passionate about outside of their sport, you know, cause it's, you know, that way you can change it up. I don't know. What do you think? Like, wh wh why is that important to like have something outside of your sport? That's that you're passionate about as well. You know, I think through sports and some people it's more obvious than others, but sports teach you to be so driven and really invest everything or, you know, every bit of yourself into it. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't realize how much I needed that attachment to something that made me feel so passionate and also at the same time, extremely driven and competitive. Mm -hmm. um, you know, at, at one point, like I mentioned with football, when I was with the Patriots for training camp and I came back to the Packers, I actually, in between that time, I was at home for almost two months without a job. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I started kind of like getting the, the nervous tick of, you know, I, I, there's a job I can fall back on. You know, I mean, I, I graduated from Michigan and I had a degree and it wasn't so much that I was afraid I couldn't get a job. It was, would it be something I'm passionate about? Would I still have that competitive edge? Would I still be driven about it? Yeah. And honestly, I could go out and get a job, but I probably wouldn't have those feelings, you know, where you, you, you work really hard and, you know, on a project or, you know, whatever the job may be. Mm -hmm. And at the end of it, it would just be a project. It wouldn't be yeah. like in football where you prep for the week and you have the game and then you play. I mean, you know, you, you really have that drive every single week mm -hmm. to get better and to like, see, I feel like, you know, in the way we're in the practice, you can see yourself progressing and you have that feeling of achievement and continuing to build on those achievements with more. And I just, I was, you know, during those two months where I didn't have a job, I was like, I really need something that I'm doing while I'm, you know, if I get a job with football, I need to have this as well, or start thinking about what am I going to do if I don't have football or when it's done. Mm -hmm. And I, I think cars for me is really that thing because I'm really, really passionate about it. Yeah. But I really want to push myself and see, okay, now obviously I'm still kind of in a young stage as far as talent and everything mm -hmm. and actually doing things, but I really want to push myself and see, okay, how far can I really take this work? How can I take my talents? How can I grow my abilities? And I just started feeling like it was just how I think about football, but just in a different world. Yeah. And I think that's huge for athletes to really, if you, you know, have a passion, great, go after it. And with football and whatever sport you're in, especially with, you know, you guys at Connect and IL, mm -hmm. you have so many businesses that you can get people in contact with and start making those networking and those connections. And I think that's awesome because, you know, just being friends with you, I've met so many business people. They want to connect with athletes. They want yeah. that you know, athlete mindset of competing and working hard. And it's just so cool when you meet other people that 
they care about you and who you are as a person. And you're like, whoa, this is just incredible. Like, I feel like you discover a whole new world that way. Um, you know, and that's something I wish I started doing more of in college. Yeah. You know, not just in the NFL, but especially in college, because so many Good people just want right to tell you. Everyone who's in college is listening to this guy right here. He's just <laughs> Seriously. getting high information. <laughs> oh, man. I Even today, like, I'll, I'll meet people that I never knew, and they knew I went to Michigan. And they're like, hey, you went to Michigan. Oh, dude, I want to talk to you about this and this. Like, what are you up to? This is so cool. Yeah. And, um, you know, even still today in the NFL, there's, there's people that knew me from college because I played at Michigan. Um that they just want to get to know me, you know, and they, they want to know what, what am I doing outside of football? And they're all business people. And, you know, I mean, uh, like I said, I met with speed Corps. I met them through somebody I knew at Michigan. He was like, Hey man, uh, I just want to reach out to you. Like I know the speed core. And I think I remember you being like, you know, really into cars. Are you still into cars? And I was like, Oh yeah. And then I basically had the conversation that you and I are having right now. Yeah. And he's like, Oh, I got people you got to meet. I know there, there are these people you got to meet. You got to, we'll get you together and you're just going to love it. And I met with him and I was like, this is so cool. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I love that. It's like, oh. yeah, you never know who you're going to connect with and, you know, how, no. how that connection, you know, how you can help them, they can help you. And, you know, you just never know how that can change the future. So, no, I yeah, it, it's definitely a fun process. Yeah. Uh, dang, the mountain, man. Well, thank you for taking some time out of your day to jump on the podcast Absolutely. with me, Ben. Really? Yeah. Hey, thanks for having me, man. Uh, it's been great to get out here and talk with you guys. And, you know, this is awesome. I think what you're doing is great. Man, well, thanks. Well, if you guys want to ask him about cars, you need to go and direct message him ASAP because he, he is awesome. You know, he's, I always say he's like the diesel, like diesel brothers. He's the brother that they haven't met yet, you know, that they need to meet. <laughs> I would love to meet them someday. That would be a lot of fun. Cool. All right, cool. Ben. Well, thanks. Appreciate you. We'll see you. Yeah, ya. thanks, man. Absolutely.